Seth Rogen has made a name for himself in Hollywood as everyone's favorite pot-smoking jerk. The actor has amassed a filmography of hilarious movies. He did a very good job in The Good Guys, which is like really bad. It takes a special kind of artist to bring tears of joy and sadness to our eyes, and for that, we will always celebrate Rogen. And now, we'll talk about the 10 best Seth Rogen movies, ranked without any further delay. Let's get into it. His first movie on our list is Sausage Party. Rogan has lent his distinctive voice to exactly 10 animated feature films, which comprise nearly a quarter of his entire acting filmography. Therefore, it seemed wrong to ignore this prominent aspect of his career. Now, as far as voice roles are concerned, Rogan is probably remembered first and foremost as the voice of Mantis in the Kung Fu Panda movies. But when I think of those movies, I also think of Jack Black, followed by Oscar winners Dustin Hoffman and Angelina Jolie. I thought Rogan did a great job as Pumbaa in the Lion King remake, in which he was well matched with Billy Eichner. But he did a better job than the original voice of Puma, Ernie Sabella, right? There are also plenty of fans of Rogan's voice as the titular alien who befriends Simon Pegg and Nick Frost in 2011's Paul. But the truth is, there's one Rogan voice role that stands above the rest, and that's his job in Sausage Party. Rogan voiced Frank, an anthropomorphic hot dog who lives in a supermarket and wants to slip into Brenda, a delicious hot dog bun, voiced by Kristen Wiig. When Frank discovers the truth about his short existence, he sets out on a journey with his friends to escape his fate while facing his idiot nemesis, Nick Kroll. The fact that Rogan also co-wrote and produced this foul-mouthed food-based fantasy sets it above the other films for me. Sausage Party is a brilliant parody of Disney films, and audiences rewarded their creativity by becoming the highest rated animated film of all time, surpassing South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Next, we'll talk about his role in Observe and Report. Listen, I may not love this movie from writer-director Jody Hill as its main character. I mean, it's hard to love, but you have have to respect this performance from Rogan, who steps out of his comfort zone to play Ronnie Barnhart, a mall bouncer, mentally unstable, who looks more like Travis Bickle than Paul Blart. Rogan is fearlessly committed to the role, but it's tricky, especially when a rape scene is played out for laughs. I mean, the comedy doesn't get much darker than that. As well-intentioned as Ronnie is, his perception is likely skewed, as many believe the character to be bipolar, which would explain why Ronnie ended up failing his psych exam to become a police officer. Observe and Report might not be a movie I return to often, but Rogan deserves credit for putting in the effort as an actor, even if his comedic creation does annoy audiences a bit. Next up, Take This Waltz. Take This Waltz marked the first time Rogan dipped his toes into dramatic water. It's not that there's no real drama at the center of Knocked Up or Freaks and Geeks. It's just that a laugh was always waiting around the corner. Take This Waltz is different. It is a Sarah Pauly film, starring Michelle Williams as Margot, a writer who begins to struggle with her feelings for her husband, Lou, played by Rogan, while exploring a new relationship with Daniel, an artist who lives across the street. It's a very sensitive film and a clear change of pace for Rogan, who behaves very well, bringing Lou's feelings to the fore with great consideration and empathy. This waltz illustrates this truism of life in an effective way, aided by Rogan's sweet and humble performance. What about Superbad? To be totally honest, this was the last movie to make this list, although it is at number 7, above three other choices. It's because when I think Superbad, I think of Jonah Hill, Michael Sarah, and Christopher Mintz Plus as McLovin above all else. Rogan and fellow officer Bill Hader are some Something of an afterthought for me. And yet, if I were to consider Rogan's supporting performances in 50-50 and The 40-Year-Old Virgin, which I 
decided were at stake, didn't I have to at least consider giving Superbad a place? Not only did Rogan and Evan Goldberg write the script when they were teenagers in Canada, but the two leads are based on their friendship, which had to count for something. The next of his movies is Longshot. This wonderful romantic comedy was sorely forgotten in the last year, mainly because audiences couldn't get over the idea that a goddess like Charlize Theron would never give a schlub like Rogan the time of day, let alone fall in love with him. I'd understand if this love interest makes you raise an eyebrow, but it works in the context of the movie, not just on the page, but on the actual screen. Thanks to the unlikely chemistry between Rogan and Theron, I was really moved when Rogan admitted to himself that, as much as he wanted to, he could never subvert his own personality to help Theron's political career. He's a nice guy who really cares about her and shouldn't have to change, since she's the one who, when it comes to her own love life, needs to stop caring what other people think. Polls are for politics, not romance. It's a refreshing message, and Rogan is a first ever first lord. His next movie on the list is This Is The End. Want better Seth Rogen is there than the real one. Rogen played a not that fictionalized version of himself in this apocalyptic comedy, which is fueled by his friendship with fellow Canadian Jay Baruchel, whom he first worked with on Undeclared. Jay has been looking forward to a quiet weekend with Seth, who insists on taking him to a party at James Franco's house, where naturally all hell breaks loose. That's right, the rapture made it to the Hollywood comedy A-list, and only a handful of guys were spared. Rogan's genuine affection for Baruchel paid dividends here, and this film continues to be totally unbelievable. Next is Neighbors. Rogan grew up a little with this underrated comedy from director Nicholas Stoller. He played a father who was desperate to protect his family when a boisterous and belligerent fraternity takes over the house next door. In recent years, Rogan himself may have presided over this fraternity, which is why it was so interesting to see him trade a red solo cup for a baby and a mortgage. Don't worry, Rogan still has a lot of fun in this high school comedy. Once again, Rogan's co-star is a little out of his league, but he sold us on his marriage to Rose Byrne, who delivered the film's standout performance. Instigated by a friend, Ike Barinholtz, the couple embarked on a growing rivalry with Zac Efron and Dave Franco before a ceasefire was finally concluded. I never envisioned Rogan as the picture of domestic bliss, but when the dust settles on neighbors, it was an oddly good look for him. Next up, Pineapple Express. This was the Seth Rogen comedy where it all came together. Director David Gordon Green allowed him to go hog wild with James Franco, who, if you can imagine, would play the role of Rogen early on. Fortunately, things worked out for the cast, and the film's unique combination of action, comedy, and weed created the perfect movie for a junkie. I remember when the Pineapple Express trailer first hit before its release in the summer of 2008. Audiences went wild when MIA's hit single Paper Planes kicked off, and Rogan flew through the air like a stoned Superman. He and Franco were unlikely action stars, but the two made it with the help of Danny McBride's shotgun-wielding drug dealer, Red. The next movie on our list is Steve Jobs. Part of this film's placement on this list is Danny Boyle's sterling direction. Part of that is Rogan's verbal sparring partner, Michael Fassbender. Part of this is the true story itself and most of that is Aaron Sorkin's brilliant, fast-paced dialogue. But this is the closest Rogan has ever come to an Oscar nomination for his performance. The paper fits him like a glove. Steve Jobs may fall short of that mark, but it remains one of the best movies Rogan has ever made, and one of the best performances he's ever given. He does a great job taking on Fassbender, calling Jobs when necessary, and reminding his old friend where he came from, a small garage in Los Altos, California. Wrapping it all up, we have Knocked Up. Knocked Up must have felt like a miracle at the time for Rogan, as the movie played to his strengths, and it looked like Apatow wrote it specifically for him. He played Ben Stone, junkie and lazy bones, whose biggest ambition is to launch a website that chronicled famous 
scenes in movies, a website that already existed at the time. Knocked Up was a real home run for Rogan, which is why it's at the top of our list. That concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. See you next time.